Ukrainian spring is always blooming and its natural beauty is very impressive. Just one of the flowers presented on the screen is not real. Can you guess which one? This is not just a copy, but a piece of confectionery art. UATV has learned how such edible flowers are made and how difficult it is to make them. If there's no bread, let them eat cakes. Allegedly, this is a quote of the French queen Marie Antoinette, who was so out of touch with the problems of average citizens that she advised them to eat sweets. But historians are inclined to believe that the writer and philosopher Jean-Jacques Rousseau invented this fallacy. But what is funny is that this idea eventually came true. In the 18th century, a confectionery was an exclusive court profession, and even pastries remained unaffordable for the common folk. The French Revolution swept away the monarchy and confectioners lost their jobs. They opened their workshops and began to offer royal sweets to everyone. In other words, by the covenant of Marie Antoinette, people finally began eating pastries. This democratization led to an unprecedented boom of European confectionery art in the 19th century, when many new preparation and decor technologies of cakes were invented. This was the start of the history of sophisticated decor the guest of our program is passionately engaged in. My specialty – sugar flower pasting. This is one of the spheres in decorating cakes. I decorate cakes with flowers. It's a form of art that requires a lot of creativity. Olesa Holumbevska has been decorating cakes with amazingly realistic flowers for about 10 years and teaches this art form to others. She's one of the best flower pasting masters in Ukraine. The flower at the beginning of the program was made of this edible material. Not a single material in confectionery art offers such great opportunities as flower pasting. Any sculpture, almost any flower and practically any texture, decor can be made of it. Watch next how Alessa Holumbevska could learn such sophisticated confectionery decor art. What is the difference between flower paste and wafer paper flowers? And what unexpected tricks the master applies to make flowers as realistic as possible? Learn all about modern edible decorations on UATV. Historians considered that confectionery art began in the early 19th century, when the writer Jane Austen wrote about flower pasting. The British masters started developing this sphere, and over the next hundred years, they improved this technique and experimented with recipes. In 1981, confectionery enthusiasts founded the British Sugar Craft Guild, and since then, this non-profit organization is considered the pioneer of flower pasting. Olesa Holumbevska was involved most of her life in a completely different hobby. Once she wanted to bake a cake in honor of her daughter's first birthday, not just with glaze and a candle, but with an interesting decor. I looked for companies involved in cake decor on the internet. I found some white, light and smooth coatings, but I could not understand what they were. And I finally realized that it was flour paste. At that moment, it was 2010, and this coating was gaining in popularity among consumers. After participating in a local masterclass in 2011, Olesa then realized that she could not just please her family several times a year, but also make sugar flowers professionally. The works of British colleagues delighted her, and then she dreamed of learning this art firsthand. I was involved in baking and decorating cakes, but my free time was mostly dedicated to flowers. Then a year later, I had an opportunity to visit one more masterclass by an English master. I took advantage of this opportunity, because I had a strong conviction. If I didn't go, it would be even hard to breathe from me. Ukrainian woman managed to enroll in the course of leading British confectioner Alan Dan, involved in flower pasting for 20 years. After these courses, the more decor that Alessa created and exhibited, the more proposals she received to teach this art. Especially for UATV, Alessa Holumbevska is conducting a masterclass on preparing edible flowers and sharing the most affordable way. How it's made Flower paste has been known since the 17th century, when it was used for making candies. And only in the late 19th century, confectioners realized that this material was good for decor. There are flower pastes for coating. Some pastes called floral, because flowers are made of them. 
and there are also pastes for figurines. They differ in consistency and drying time. Flower paste is available for sale in any modern confectionery store. Olesa bought it there the first time. It can also be prepared at home, but you should know its peculiarities and what is best to add based on the task. Gelatine, various thickeners, glucose syrup and certain flavors are added. In the air, flour paste thickens quickly, so it's better to store it in a container covered with sarin wrap. The simplest thing in this art is to prepare the material. A confectionery florist who wants to master a new flower should also be a botanist and a designer. I buy the necessary flowers in a flower shop. If it is not in the shop, I check on the internet or I read an encyclopedia. I am interested in its width, petal height, the number of petals and the structure of its leaves. When I pick a flower, I look closely at its petals. Alessa straightens out the petals and applies them to a piece of paper and makes patterns. According to them, she makes so-called cuttings to transfer their contours in the flower paste. This is basically the same process as using a standard glass to cut out round forms from dough. We use a metal form with sharp edges to cut out the flower. Then everything is ready. Very often I don't like ready forms that are sold on the internet. Therefore, I make them myself at home. Of course, there is possibility to order these forms from a master according to the patterns that I design myself. It's important for a confectioner not only to copy the shape of the petal or leaf, but also its texture and volume. Making flower veins by hand is too difficult and time-consuming. For this, a special imprint technology was invented. A silicone print is taken from a living flower and is carefully imprinted into the flower paste. I roll a petal on a slicing board. Then I cut the petal out and put it into a silicone print. After that, it has a natural texture and the right curves. The main thing is to avoid immersion in sculptural work and not forget that flower paste thickens quickly outside its container. A master has only 10 to 15 minutes to complete this procedure and make all the manipulations. If it's not enough, Olesa advises to add glycerol or fat to flower paste, as this prolongs its plasticity. The finished chamomile petal is put aside and confectioner works with the next one. Depending on design complexity and experience of the master, it takes an hour to half a day to make one flower. I always tell all those who are still gaining experience in this process, you can unevenly cut a petal, you can allow some inaccuracy in the form, but the most crucial thing is, of course, painting. From my experience, I believe that this is perhaps even more important than the form itself. If Olesia needs a bright or dark monophonic rose, she adds a pasty dye to the flower paste. As for daisies and flowers of most subtle and delicate shades, the confectioner becomes an artist. Then flower paste remains white, and when the petal is ready and dried in the right shape, I paint it with dry paint. I also call it pollen. It gives such a smooth color transition. So we specially perform our work using art brushes made of synthetic hair to ensure the best result. Painted petals of chamomile are attached to the bases with the help of ordinary tape used by florists. Wire wrapped with the same tape serves as a stem. The main thing is to not try and eat this part. The last element is that the core of the design should be well thought out. We invent our own tricks that bring our flowers somewhat closer to the natural environment. For example, we sprinkle the middles with colored semolina. If larger grain is needed, then we use maize grits. While the finished flowers are drying up, Olesa makes the appropriate decorations. In addition to chamomile, she makes wild strawberries. The silicone form, where the master places a painted material of two or three different shades, helps to make the berries more textured. Transition of berries from the greenest to rich burgundy red looks very beautiful on the branch. So I use three colors – light green, pink and dark red. Further, this form is placed in the freezer for approximately 30 minutes. After that, a confectioner should manually paint each sugar berry to avoid sharp transitions of shades. 
tone in petals is more difficult. If to pay a little attention to the wild strawberries, they can spoil the whole decor with their artificiality. All the berries that we have painted and toned are immersed in a food varnish. It fixes the color, makes it more saturated and gives such a light, beautiful, natural gloss, like real berries. We should attach the sepal, cover the stalks with tape and assemble everything in a single twig, add in leaves. Chamomiles with wild strawberries are a relatively simple decoration that can be assembled in a few hours. Olesya's collection includes works that made her change her usual technologies or invent new ones. This huge lotus is a perfect example. Its thin petals cannot be made with the help of usual silicone prints. When we insert a regular petal into a silicone print, it goes flat anyway, but we need to make it round. And not just slightly round, but rather bowed like Therefore, there are cutouts at the top and lower part of the petal. The same goes with lotus box. Only the stamens are purchased here, but the box was also made. Again, there is no definite recipe for where to take its metal. And now I think how to make holes. So I look for confectionery tools to make small 3 mm pierces. I just try to convey their appearance as close to natural reality as possible. Starchy threads serve as stamens, so lovers of sweets should also be wary of this part. But the petals themselves are always edible, so there is nothing to fear. In parallel with flower pasting, Olesia also mastered wafer paper arrangements. I used this piece of paper to make all these flowers, but interestingly enough, this paper is edible. <laughs> this material is rather new on the confectionery market, and it is used when it is necessary to make airy flowers with a large number of flat petals. I cut the desired shape, wet and glue it. If necessary, I cut off, make cutouts and glue them together. Petals should have such a rounded shape. Wafer petals are also wound on the wire, only unlike flower paste, they are easily glued using either water or vodka. If to glue two halves and apply them to each other, they instantly stick together. The advantage is that this process allows finishing the work very quickly. The disadvantage is that if you put the petals together in the wrong way, then it is hard to unglue them. That means that you need to tear them apart. Olesa says that all flowers can be made of flower paste. You just need to work harder than in the case of wafer paper. However, the paper is tasteless and that can be important for someone. The Ukrainian confectioner made cakes with decor upon special order and helped her colleagues with decorations. She has recently focused on teaching and every month holds several master classes in Ukraine. Olesia was also invited to take courses in Croatia and Israel. I suggest basic principles and my disciples continue their career that turns out differently for any one of them. Someone continues while others give up. I enjoy teaching. I like it when my disciples share their successes and failures. I feel happy when they say that my flowers help them organize a beautiful holiday. If they attend my fourth or fifth master class, it means that they appreciate my work and that they need me to help the progress.